that was all. No doubt he had meditated on his decision, but I had had no part in his deliberations. A man goes out for cigarettes and never returns. A man tells his wife he is taking a stroll and doesn't come home for dinner ever again. One day in winter, the man just up and left. Boris had not articulated his unhappiness. He had never told me he didn't want me. It just came over him. Who were these men? After I pieced myself together with, quote, professional help, I returned to older, more reliable territory, to the land of M. It was true that Mama's world had shrunk, and she had shrunk with it. She ate too little, I thought. When left to her own devices, she assembled large plates of raw carrots and peppers and cucumbers with, with perhaps one tiny piece of fish or ham or cheese. For years, the woman had cooked and baked enough for armies and stored the foodstuffs in a gigantic freezer in the basement. She had sewn our dresses, mended our wool stockings, shined copper and brass until it gleamed bright and hard. She had curled butter for parties, arranged flowers, hung out on iron sheets that smelled of clean sun when you slept in them. She had sung to us at night, handed us edifying reading material, censored movies, and defended her daughters to uncomprehending school teachers. And when we were sick, she would make a bed for the ailing child on the floor near her while she did the housework. I loved being unwell with Mama. Not vomiting or truly miserable, perhaps, but in a state of recovery by increments. I loved to lie on the special bed and feel Mama's hand on my forehead, which she then moved up into my sweaty hair as she checked the fever. I loved to sense her legs moving near me, to listen to her voice, take on that special intonation for the invalid, song-like and tender, which would make me want to stay ill, to lie there forever on the little pallet, pale, romantic, and pathetic, half me, half swooning actress, but always securely orbited by my mother. 